Man, we had so many good times. I was kind of hoping we could have some more. But, wait, what? Oh, oh, I see. So a girl from a long time ago. Oh, wanted love, but she let me know. No, now my heart's broke. My heart's broke. Well, hey, you may not like me that way, but we can still be friends, right? Right? Wait, no, where are you going? Come back! <sighs> and welcome back to this episode of Heartbreak, guys. This is NW Epic, and we're still playing Katoa Sojo. So, in the last episode, um, we got to know some of the girls. I'm blanking on the names right now, but they'll come back to me. Misha and Shizune, obviously. Muto was the teacher. Our name is Hasao. <laughs> yeah, okay. There we go. And um, we're still getting used to the school, essentially. Um, we're actually, I think, the last thing we do... Yeah, the girl with the long hair. So we're gonna... Kind of get to know her, it seems. Get to know what she's about. Why she's kind of mysterious and all these good things. And Let's continue. Before I had the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to start working. She looks more than a little annoyed that we only just barely managed to finish all our work on time. I'm glad we finished it all. It's not a contest or anything. Oh, she about to give you the real talk. Yes, it is, He-Chan! <laughs> Bakada! <laughs> Impossible. Really? Really. I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but what anyone else is saying at any given moment. Obviously, it must be so Shisune can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and mine. And me. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune. I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really... She's in can't hear me, but it would be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha. Then again, isn't that what she's doing? No, she's at least looking at me. This is all very confusing. It will take some time to get used to. It's not a contest, because contests are competitions over a prize. If there's no prize on the line, it's not really a contest. She's in the eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. I never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. It's truly an alluring glare. Gaze. Are you sure, Hee-chan? Very sure. <laughs> You're wrong, Hee-chan, because I don't want to be the slowest one in the class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence and my abilities, and the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. <laughs> she suddenly pushes her glasses up to the bridge of her nose in a very matter-of-fact way. I argue more, but the bell rings and she quickly gets up and picks up her bag, looking at me inspectingly. I had almost forgotten that I was supposed to have lunch with them. Where do you want to eat? The cafeteria? Ha 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 ha! That's so plain. Okay, let's go. Plain? Well, I guess. In my old school, I liked to eat outside near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it until near the end of my freshman year. I wonder if there's a similar place to eat here. Misha seems to imply as much. Shizune and Misha pull me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some students favor eating in classrooms or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates had box lunches. Oh, bento! After we finish eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. So, Yi chan you wanted to know about clubs and stuff, right? Right? Right, Chi chan Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask first. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn to face me again, and Misha strains her posture as if she is about to deliver a speech. Uh, Hee-chan, do you have anything you're really interested in? Uh, I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. Uh, I don't follow the teams and the players or anything like that. As of late, I usually just read a lot. Hmm. There's a book club, right, Shi-chan? Right? But it seems like they have all the members they can possibly have right now. Sorry, Hee Chan, it's a really popular club. Ah, okay, but more to the point, Hee Chan, does this mean that you don't have anything already in mind? Not really. 
good, great, excellent. He chan really great. Why is it so great? No reason. Well, Hee-chan, other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there is one other thing. Student Council! I see. I didn't know the school had a student council. That was a very melodramatic setup, though, just to tell me that. Pretty sure the two of them know this, because Shizune looks a little embarrassed about it, and Misha is laughing. Shizune quickly retakes control of the discussion in a manner of speaking. After all, it's still Misha who has to voice at whatever she says. Ha ha ha! Hmm, right, right, Hee-chan? Maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. Why? Well, for one, we can hang out every day, Hee-chan. Chi-chan and I are both in the student council. Actually, Chi-chan is the president. Hmm. I'm starting to get the suspicion that Sh Shizune and Misha might not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk to about this. <laughs> um, as if reading my mind, Shizune quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. Ha ha ha, of course we're not trying to get you to join just because we would obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get you to... So you're admitting that... Ha ha ha, no we admit nothing. I mean, he chan of course, it would be nice if you joined and we appreciate it. But even without all of that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one school. Yep, it's true he chan besides, don't you want to spend time with us after school he chan I can't tell if she's being genuine or if this is just really good acting. Both of them see seem to be trying hard to look their cutest, although they are already pretty cute to begin with. Well, <laughs> he's out. <laughs> Dropping bombs. So it's settled then. Welcome to the student council, Hee Chan. What? No! Yeah! Yeah! Aw, see Hee Chan? Of course it wouldn't go so easily. Yep, that's right, though it would be boring if it went that smoothly. Oh well, she chan owes me candy now. You are bending on it? <laughs> hey, my life is not a game here. Shisune seems in very intrigued by this when Misha signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns to her eyes. <laughs> that's interesting, he chan Let's play a game. That's not what I said. How about rich man, poor man, he chan If you lose, you have to join the student council. No, absolutely not. Aw, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive and therefore the same goal, which is to get me to join the student council, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that isn't my goal. What this means is that both of you can team up and I'll be at a clear disadvantage, so I will have to decline. Hey chan I'm very offended. Are you saying you don't trust us that we pull something so dis 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 ingenuous? That makes me sad. Sorry? It's hard to tell where Shizune's influence ends and Misha's thoughts begin. In order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. No! <laughs> How about a game of paper football instead of rich man, poor man? Paper football. Yeah, it's a game they play in America. Ameri America. 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 You make a paper triangle and then you try to shoot it past goalposts that the other player makes with their fingers. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people, Hee Chan. And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, Chi Chan. <laughs> that means it's a game that really separates the boys from the men. We're like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyways, I'm not going to play that either. Just the fact that you know about it means you're probably surprisingly good at it. <laughs> She's so much collusion going on. Yeah, yeah, that's true. How did you know, Hee Chan? She only frowns at Misha, telling me that she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. I wouldn't say that I'm happy with their attempts to get me to the student council, but I'm a little curious about what the student council does. I've never been on one before, or even known about know anybody who was a member, so it interests me. I also kind of like Shizune and Misha, so maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Okay, Hee Chan, how about risk? The game of world domination. I don't know what that is. It's really funny, Chan. You fight for control of the world with armies and everything. Sounds like Shizune would be good at it. If you want to play, we can after school. Oh, really, Shi Chan? We can play just for fun, He Chan. She's Shi Chan hasn't played in a long time, so if you want to, there are no strings attached. Well, okay. Okay, okay. 
Okay! Perfect! We'll see you after school in the student council room then, He-Chan. Wait, why there? Because that's where we keep the game. I grimace to tell them how much I do not like this, but it's more for show than anything. So in the end, I agree, but only after getting Shizune to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete just by accepting to take a look around and play a game with her. Lunch ends and we go back to class. During afternoon classes, the long haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. After school, Shizune and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. I feel a little offended, but I'm, I'd been considering it. Nevertheless, I'm disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. <laughs> What's with the escort? This doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to his cell. <laughs> What's wrong, he chan that's right, we're just gonna play. We're just going to go play a game of Risk, remember? I don't know, Misha. This all seems a little sinister to me. I start thinking that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torture me <laughs> until I agree to join the student council. Well, that's highly unlikely, but still, for some reason, it just seems like it would be so plausible. Getting to the student council room is as simple as turning two corners from where we started. What? That's it? This makes you guys being so on top of me seem a little silly. That's not true, Hee-chan. Chi-chan says that when is, their life is threatened, people have shown the capability to pull off superhuman bursts of speed. <laughs> life threat. Life threat. And obviously, they have rope, tried to rope in many people. Her expression unchanging, Misha signs something amusedly to Shizune, who makes a baffling face and puts her hands behind her back, looking pleased with herself. Mmm. <laughs> That's essentially what's going on there. Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. <laughs> Stop that. I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. <laughs> Shizune opens the door to the student council room. It's a very plain, sparsely decorated room. Although it is quite large, maybe even a little larger than a classroom. There's a big table in the center of the room, surrounded by chairs, um, and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back that I assume is Shizune's. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras, perhaps? Aside from the tables and chairs, the room doesn't have much else to offer, just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves stacked with old school records and documents. Not much else. In fact, nothing else. This is a pretty bleak room. They could at least put a potted plant in here or something, but the most notable, noticeable thing that this room doesn't have is other people. Are we early? Hi, hi. No. What do you mean, no? Does it mean nobody else is coming today? Kyo wa iki iki cha iki No, iki. Yeah, forget about it. Um. Yeah, that's right. Hi. Before I manage to ask why that's the case, Shizuni claps her hands together very energetically. Hee-chan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, 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 okay! <laughs> Terry Bogart. Do you want to know the rules? We can explain to you while we set up everything. Uh, while Misha's talking, Suzuni takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on the table. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. Emusuroi. After Misha spends a little too long for a liking running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial. Suzune cuts in and declares the game is started with a decisive motion, slicing her air through the arm. Say no. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when I agreed to this. And you got body, good sir. <laughs> Halfway into the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. Hee-chan, Shi-chan wants you to know that you are taking too long to make a move. Shi-chan also says that she will let you keep Australia if you agree to join the student council. I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head in the offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. 
Okay, anyway, no. Chi Chan admires your fighting spirit and would be a benevolent dictator who would spare your people if you agree to if you agree to join the student council. I love Shizune. <laughs> She's great. <laughs> I can't do the voice. He's so competitive, Shizune. She seems to take this as a compliment. I'd expect the student council president to be a little more magnet magnanimous. <laughs> Magnanimous. There we go. Magnanimous. She doesn't seem to know what the word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Zazune, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index finger against her temples as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gesture. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heated signing. Oh, wait, please, slow down, Shi Chan. Um, He Chan, Shizune says you're going to lose. <laughs> Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's go, Luke. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Shizune is the best. Those eyes of hers shine with a childlike mischief. She says she. You have no chance if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. It's a trap. It's smarter to play defensively. She has a point. Attack aggressively. Oh, man. I gotta decide? Um... How was I playing earlier? It doesn't tell you how you're playing earlier. When I play fighting games, I rely on solid footsies and pokes. I'm aggressive in the corner, but that's only on the mix-up. And I feel like if I'm losing, I want to play defensively so we're, let's keep it let's keep it defensive it's likely that she's trying to psych me out looking at the board again I have a pretty good defense setup and I'm not going to wreck it doing something reckless a few turns later I lose the game <laughs> I sat there uh oh well whatever Shizune adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively tentatively pump a fist in the air in celebration Waha! He Chan, you lost when you allow me to take North America. I mean, She Chan, not me. <laughs> Getting control of North America is ambitious because it provides a five army bonus, but you can attack it from three fronts, so you must defend them all. She's in there. Oh, she's, she's letting us know. I thought you had more guts. How disappointing. Ambition, He Chan. Your play needs to be more daring. Ambition! Ambition! I was really excited when you took South America, but then you switched to playing defensively just because you gained a small advantage. That's not good, he Chan. Oh, oh, come on, Shizune, don't be like that. See, I, see, this is why, this is why love doesn't work for me, guys. I always <laughs> say to mess up. Always. Anyways, you didn't take enough risks, and when you did, you didn't follow through. That's terrible, he Chan. Dang, what's it to her if I play too carefully? There's no no need to rub it in my face. I wonder if you even be any good for the student council. What's this, reverse psychology? I guess I don't have to worry about joining or not in that case. Giving up just like that? I expected more of you. Seriously, is Suzune trying to taunt me into joining the council? Besides, I don't even want to join. It's only my second day. I can't make that kind of commitment. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet, and these two, they're a little weird. Fine, I'll consider joining the council, but I want to take a look at the clubs before I decide. Really, he chan You're not just saying that to make us feel better. Yeah, yeah, I'm just not sure that I want to. Aw. Okay, he chan but we're not going to give up so easily, he said. Maybe. There's still a chance you'll come around. Come on, we could really have fun. We could play more risk, and maybe one day you could beat me, unless we graduate before that. Oh my gosh. The mouth on this girl. I have to body her. <laughs> they need an interactive game of risk in here so I can just body her. Um, that doesn't make me feel any less reluctant, reluctant about joining you, you know. <laughs> Surely you're not that horrible for board games. Maybe we can play a game you know then to give you a handicap. Yeah. See me at Connect 4, Suzune. <laughs> See me at Connect 4. <laughs> I'm god like in Connect 4. Checkers too. I might have said that just to make you feel better, after all. Aww, that's cool, He-Chan. 
I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I spent far longer playing Risk than I expected. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Suzune scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall. It should be unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, Shichen. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. Can't miss it. Do you want us to show you where it is? No thanks. It's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye bye! One flight of stairs and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor. Wide, of course, and plain, like only hallways can be. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. You should have just asked for help, brother. The classrooms are marked with signs starting, stating which class they belong to, but then there's a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them, or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bet on the ladder and choose my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either, though. Just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means that someone is inside and I can ask for directions, no matter how embarrassing that is. I, oh, I didn't read that! The feeling of being an outsider to the school can't be shaken from my mind, so much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. The door slowly creaks as if groaning from deep sleep, though it's much easier to open than I anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head ever further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek hello of my lips is quickly snatched away. Eh, I don't find her as cute as the other. This is not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center and stage in the otherwise abandoned room. This, the situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway staring at the beautiful girl. Evidently, having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes but doesn't look at me. Hello there. May I help you? Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. Power is the soft, measured voice that reminds me she's being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, hi. Sorry for intruding. I was just... kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Uh, care to take a seat? Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Um... Thanks. I slowly step towards another seat opposite of her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That, and the slight cloudiness to her eyes means she must at le be at least partially blind, like Kenji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes my, me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamaku. Yamaku. Yeah, Yamaku. Ah, I'll get that right. Ah, yeah, I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting, one which I hasten to ma hasten to match before realizing the futility of my action. I'm Lily Sato. Pleased to meet you. Hisao. Hisao Nakai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along the shelf. A brush here, a brush there, her left hand awfully, often slightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to use her long, dainty finger to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing, it's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone it seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problem working together to c communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for problems I never thought of. 
While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of offering of offer preparing the drink. So, her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Which rooms were you looking for? I like her portrait better here. It's not often this classroom is visited after school. The school library. Shizune and me, I mean, some classmates told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods. A small metallic tapping comes from the teacup, indicating it being stirred. I'm aware, I'm aware of Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, you know? That's right, in the science room of Muto. She gives a small giggle before setting down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the table, teacup and saucer in hand. He's quite a character. I imagine you'll come to like him, like m most do. That face, though. That's the face of a man who is interested. <laughs> a very interested man, sir. You're a very interested man. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> He's a joke. Nonetheless, the smell, the smell is quite nice. I really think it'd be hard to choke down. Thanks, Sato. It tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her. Lily, please. There's no need to be too formal. Lily's son. I forgot the sons in all the other videos. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh well. I guess I should try and ask her about herself, as it really does seem as if she's catering to me. So which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third year classes. Correct. I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, and it's specifically for both blind and partially blind students. I see. Ah, oh, I mean, <laughs> sorry, go man. I feel like slapping myself for the fox paws. The fox paws. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce that? Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem in the least bit put off by it. My, my, there's no need to change your speech on my account. Ah, oh, sure, sorry, I guess I'm really showing my newness here. An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic, I seg into another one. Do you come here often? Do you come here to drink cocktails? <laughs> Do you come here to drink tea often? It's really a really nice place. Thinking on it, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. So my duty as class represent representative. Don't leave enough time for an official club, so a friend and I use this room for having tea. Crowd class representative, huh? Compared to Zizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Zizune is blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. What kind of clubs are there to join? Hmm, the more popular ones are the track and field club, which uses the field near the school during lunchtime, the baseball club, and the book club in the room near the library. There are also numerous small ones too, though such as the art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing into a club right away seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if this school shares the same role as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? It isn't, though it is encouraged. Ah, good. That's a relief. Whew. Loner. I've really let down my guard around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it as Lily does the same. As I look over to the window over her shoulder, I notice the light coming into the room has a distinctly orange tint. Even here, time doesn't stand still. Huh, the time's gone quickly. Sorry? Alright, she's blind. Of course you can't see the sun setting. It just looks like the sun's starting to set. It seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of the time. Sorry, Asa. Uh, I didn't mean I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly move to allay her concern. Ah, uh, no, it's okay. The library is still open, isn't it? She pauses and takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I could have asked Azuna when I had the chance, but Lily seems likely to know in any case. True, it's open until 6.30 during weekdays. Quick glance at my watch confirms I have well enough time to get there. Hmm, I might be get going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, Lily. She smiles and give a, gives a deep nod, her hands still neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Well, come to think of it, should I show you where the library is? 
I couldn't possibly ask for more help. I should be able to find it alright. Well, unless my navigational skills fail me for it. Which they seem to have a habit of doing. It's alright. I was going to be talking to the library there in any case. I could introduce you. This gets better and better. It's pretty hard to deny her after. If you're sure, then that'd be great. Thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight, retractable cane that had been slipped in the handle of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boy in my class had, Lily's looks much thinner and longer. His must be for support, whereas Lily's is for navigation. Together we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the Now my heart is broke. Now my heart is broke.